place could be uh, in Hollywood, not in the not in the hood. It was very phony, but you did good. <laughs> you did the eighth wonder of the world. Anyway, um, good. I'm glad you guys came out. This is great. This is great. And so I have a surprise for you. I've got your welfare checks. <laughs> no, they always they always trick black people to come somewhere to arrest them. They call it a sting. I think. We are, before I get to do what I'm going to do, I'm going to talk to you for a little bit because, uh, I don't know, white folks just went crazy. I don't know if you've seen uh, Planet of the Apes. White people are on drugs, trust me. If you've seen it, it's a little scary, isn't it? But the, the, the little prostitute of ape looks like Joan Rivers. That made me laugh. Didn't she? She looked just like Joan Rivers with all, the, with all that uh, facial... Uh, you know, surgery. It was very, very funny. And of course, all the light-skinned gorillas are smart. And the dark, big black ones are dummies. It's a very strange movie. Very, very strange. And another funny thing about it is the real monkey, there's a chimpanzee that's a monkey. And, and everybody who's a fake gorilla and a monkey beat up the real one. I thought that they gave him a Rodney King ass whooping. I thought, I thought that was very funny. I said, all the fake monkeys are jumping on the real monkey. That was funny to me. And then, of course, the light-skinned, uh, sexy monkey was Holly Berry. I picked up on all of it. I said, this is... And the little boy, Marky Mark, or whatever his name, he's on the planet for three days and he doesn't grow a beard. That, that's stupid. And then in this version, I like the original version because the white people didn't talk. They talk in this version, the people on the planet. And the original, they, they didn't talk. It was my kind of movie. White people who couldn't talk. What a... What a wonderful world. You know, why people who can't talk, it's a, be it's a better world. They just, and they had some little cute little white woman. Her name was Nova, if you remember the original. Nova. And she finally spoke. She said, Taylor. And they shot her. I said, this is my kind of film. They don't talk, and if they do talk, shoot them. I've seen that a, at least a hundred times. Because I liked it. But this other stuff was... And then at the end of it, it's, it, it he goes back in the time. He doesn't go back to his time. And... They have Abraham Lincoln sitting up there, and they said, in behind, they go, Abraham Lincoln, because he's, he's a gorilla, freed the humans. Now, I don't know what white folks was thinking of. I don't know if they were making fun of us, that Lincoln freed the monkeys. Or I don't know where, you know, they come up with their jokes. They can be subtle. So I didn't, I mean, I was going, this is weird. And I don't know how they got away with it. And the reviewers, that's why you look, they never reviewed it, they never said anything about it. They acted like they didn't see it. Here's Abraham Lincoln. He freed the humans? What does that mean? That he freed the monkeys? I mean, I don't get it but they would make in front of us, I don't know. But anyway, it was a stupid movie. But I'm more concerned with the, my film, I sold to Paramount, it's the last white man on earth. I'm really excited about it. And there won't be a sequel, we catch him. But anyway. <laughs> it's a lot of violence in it. We beat up Whoopi Goldberg and Donna Ross. Where is he, where is he? We've seen you with him, where is he? So we beat them, but uh, <laughs> I don't know, we're just living in real strange times. I mean, they've been looking for this little Jewish girl in Washington. You know, the one that's missing, which is scary. Because I, for my feelings, I just think she was pregnant. I just think it was her body that was a problem. Because they could have had her set up as murdered, raped, killed, all this stuff. But her body, she'll never be found. Because she was pregnant by a uh, congressman serial killer. And you notice that white people have the complexion for the protection. They're always protected. When white people do dirt, there are excuses. They were molested as children. They were loners. They were a nerd. This is all you hear. You know, whenever white people get in trouble, that's what you keep hearing. Reasons why they're crazy. Black folks, niggas are just crazy niggas. But, but white people, there's an excuse for them. And this one white man they had on death row, you see, I, I mean, every day was an excuse. They couldn't kill that white man. Uh, he has a cold, we can't do it today. Um, uh, it may have been a mistrial. Now, this man has admitted just blowing up children, women and children. They did, them white people tried their best not to kill that white man. They just can't bring themselves to do it. They were marching, lighting candles, singing. It's against God, we've got to save them. Let there be somebody black on death row. This is what they do with the candle. <laughs> This is reality. 
And that's why I'm having this love affair with uh, the Chinese people. I am into Chinese people. Every time I see the Chinese, I kiss them. They're not as scared of white folks. I finally found a race that are not afraid of white people. I love the Chinese. They didn't give a damn. They weren't giving that plane up. Well, they finally sent it back in little Chinese puzzle pieces. But the white folks was over there, all up in their face, you know. We want the plane back and talking all that stuff. They even sent that black man, Paul. They sent him over there. And they, they told him, he said, wait a minute, nigga, wait, I just a minute. The, the last nigga over here up in our face, we put on a box of rice. You better go on back to Washington. And trying to get the plane, <laughs> trying to get the plane back, trying to get the plane back, it's like telling those Chinese people, eat with a fork. It's a brilliant idea, but it's never going to happen. Because they don't care. They sent the British, didn't they? They sent the, After that lease was up, they made the British leave. They put them on a slow boat from China. They said, no, you've got to go home. And then they brought the army out. You saw the news? Don't start no shit. It won't be none. That's why I love the Chinese. Them little Chinamans don't care. And don't let them fool you. They didn't invent rice because rice came from Africa. Like, a lot of stuff comes from Africa. They always tell lies and say, you know, they find everything there, but they lie about it. Just like uh, there's niggas on Mars. They found this face up there, with big lips and wide nose, and tried to hide it and said, oh, oh it, 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 it's just a rock. No, it's a picture of a nigger. So, niggas, we've been to Mars. So you know you can find us everywhere. But white folks don't want us places they've never been. It's a, it's a rock. It's just a rock. No, it's us. Because you know, they will. when we do things, they will change history and lie. Mm -hmm. The pyramids. Ask white folks who built them. Uh, space people, Martians, chickens, anybody but us. We built the pyramids. We built them so good, we forgot how we built them. That's how good we are at shit. But they try to change. They do. They try to change stuff when we're involved. They, they, they over there digging and they always find in fossils. They found one Lucy that looked just like Whoopi Goldberg. And then they just found another one. And they always find in us when they dig it. They're just digging in Sweden and digging in Germany. Can't find nothing old. But they find us, don't they? Only thing white folks got old is Bob Hope. What is he, 97? And he's seen the light two or three times. He refuses to go. Because Bob Hope is 10 minutes older than dirt. He is. I saw him the other night. It's just Bob now. All the hope is gone. Because <laughs> black don't crack. I'm sorry. You can't. T you have to look at a nigga's ankles. Let me see your ankles. Because black don't. Look at Lena Horne. 80 what? 87, 88. She looks 48. Black does not crack. White folks are cute up till about 30. And then it's a nightmare on Elm Street. <laughs> no, because they get crow's feet, chicken feet, pigeon feet, turkey feet. Everybody feet in the white person's face. I'm just being real. It is. I'm sorry, white folks. You don't have longevity. Look at Liz Taylor. Liz Taylor was so pretty. And she was English. She's a freak of nature because the English are not cute. Let's be real, kids. The English are not attractive. They're not. Look at the queen. Now, I'm serious. If she's the queen, what the hell does the witch look like? Come on, Queen Elizabeth. I don't care. Y'all can look crazy. Queen Elizabeth is, is ugly. Her mama's ugly. Her son is ugly. His girlfriend's ugly. They all are some ugly folks. That's why they killed Lady Di. They were so jealous of her because she was cute. She brought beauty to that family. They hated her. As soon as she was at supposed accidents, which I think the queen had her killed, because she was sleeping with nigger Egyptians and kissing on African babies, she had to go. But, no, it's, I'm, I'm being real. And they never had an autopsy. Anybody with that kind of high profile, you don't take it for granted that they died like that. You find out what actually killed. A pygmy spear could have killed. They don't know. A blowgun, you know, they don't know what killed her. He ran to get that body, didn't he? Prince Charles, he didn't want it when she was alive. He broke his neck getting it when she was dead because he knew his mammy had a kill. Oh, ugly thing. Because I can't make this up. The queen said, get the jury. Now, that's a cold woman. Get the jury. That's all she was interested in. And the world was in love with Lady Di. The whole world. Flowers came from everywhere. 
And what's that old nun that died the same week? She should have held on for another week. Mother Teresa, she should have held on. Because nobody cared. They didn't. They only killed Lady Di. Lady Di. Mother Teresa said, oh, I don't care about that old woman. Lady Di. <laughs> Lady Di. The whole world. You know that. They were like, oh, Lady Di. They didn't care about that. You know Mother Teresa must have been sent straight to hell. Because I know she went to heaven cursing. Come on, all that praying, all that hard work, when she got up there, she was jealous. She saw Lady Di, I want a halo big as hers. This is not a halo, that's a steering wheel. But anyway, listen. I take it back, I take it back, I take it back. I take it back. <laughs> that white man is so funny. He got up, he had to go shake, he had to get up and shake hands with niggas. Yes, it's fine, I don't, I just, just. So I'm so glad to be here. I, I, you're not going to eat me, are you? I'm so... You're my, you're my friend, aren't you? He's funny. He has to get out of here. Look, he's gone. Look at him. Look, 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 look. It, it was the Queen Elizabeth being ugly. He's probably English. But listen, it's so funny. I'm, I'm so used to it. Anyway, look, I don't want to... Look, white man, don't be offended. My parents are white. Please relax. Anyway, it's a very funny world they live in. Did any of you black people happen to see Aretha Franklin's special? Oh my God, what's up with Aretha? She is big as a duplex. No, she's huge. Aretha's on some eating binge. And I'm talking about big old titties, just titties for everybody. I was watching her on a 19-inch TV set, and I had to go next door to my neighbor's 24-inch TV set to see both titties. It's huge titties. She's huge. Remember when Aretha was the queen of soul? Remember? She's the queen of soul food now. Remember when Aretha was basic? She wanted respect. She don't want respect. Nigga, can you cook? I want some cake. You got some biscuits. You got some bits. You got some turkey. You got some eggs. You got some chicken. You got some barbecue? You be giving me no damn respect. I want some food. Do you know the pizza man? <laughs> we want food. And there comes a time in your life when you, your weight, you're so big, you cannot wear feathers. Big folks can't wear feathers. Who dresses Aretha Franklin? Big Bird? Does Stevie Wonder get her wardrobe? Stevie, pass me that dress. Come on, does she have a mirror at home? And she keeps thinking she can, you're funny. You're watching them and not me. That's very funny. That's what the, the, the white man kills me. He's watching you guys. So he's going, he's going, no, I saw your eyes. He's, he's going, he has some strange power over his people. He's trying to figure out what's making you laugh and what kind of power I have. If I was Robin Williams, he would never look at the audience because it's just funny. You know, Robin says things about niggas that say ax into the ass. <laughs> They'll never stare at the white audience. He was staring. That's why I love my white folks. They are interesting. Anyway, look. <laughs> and I caught him, and he can't deny it. I saw his eyes. He was watching you guys. <laughs> watching your reaction to me. Seeing how dangerous I am. He'll be at my trial. I was there. I watched him. Oh, Your Honor. He's very dangerous. Get him off stage, get him off. I want Bill Cosby, I want Bill. <laughs> Bill's a good nigger, he never says nigger. Bill, I want Chris Rock, Chris Tucker, Chris Go, any of those Chris Go niggers. So that, that black scarf on and that shocker Zulu attitude. But anyway, back to Aretha. She's too much for me and still trying to wear Tony Baxton's dresses. Aretha, I mean, you can't wear Tony's dress. That's a leg warmer for you, baby. And I didn't know Aretha was just ghetto. I didn't know she was ghetto. They did a close-up of Aretha's mouth, no teeth. Didn't know, she didn't have no teeth, did she? I said, Aretha, spend some of that platinum money. Get some teeth, baby. You can't sing opera with no teeth. That isn't done. Just ain't got no teeth. That, that, that was, wasn't that scary? But she ain't by herself. And then there was Janet Jackson's special. And Janet always thought, because she was a Jackson, she was kind of kooky. Because, you know, they're kind of kooky. And then I figured her out. She's a druggie. I'm sorry. She's too spacey. Yeah, that's on some kind of drug. She's too spacey. You know, I mean, I'm bringing it to you guys. I won't mention no names, but remember, it's a singer. Remember somebody when they first came out? They were sophisticated, pretty, demure, remember? But they got into them drugs. They're not like that now. I won't mention no names. I'll just do a little imitation of them. Yeah! Ah! We're going to sing a song back at you. Ow! And you know who I'm talking about. 
Don't drugs change you? They will get into those drugs, and white folks know how to cover for them, too. With your girl, Mariah Carey, you know. Well, she had her nervous breakdown. Code name, the crackhead. But anyway, look. <laughs> but Janice is special was too much of me. And then that brother, here comes Michael. Oh, my God, it was so scary. The Phantom of the Nigger Opera. <laughs> That boy has ruined his face. Trying to be under the illusion of inclusion. When he dies and goes to heaven, God won't recognize him. St. Peter, who is that? God, that's one of the Jacksons. That's Michael, the one. That's not the face I gave Michael Jackson. What has he done to, for God's sake? Oh, I'm God. But look. <laughs> Something's wrong with that boy, and he's sick, and he's stupid. He's dumb. Does Michael really think those little white babies are his? Have you seen them white babies? Those little white-ass babies are not Michael's. There's nothing half-African, half-African about them little white-ass babies. Come on, Michael, because they put a glove on the baby? I could put a glove on this turtle. Is this your turtle, nigga? I knew when he said Liz Taylor was his mama, I knew then there was something wrong with it. That white woman is not your mother, Michael. Poor, beautiful Liz. A freak of nature, English, but pretty. Liz was drop-dead gorgeous. Just overnight she broke, overnight. Liz looked like a hag now. What happened to Liz? Liz looked like Roseanne Barr. What happened to Elizabeth Taylor? I don't know. It's the, it's the truth. That woman looked like sheep shit in shadow water. Something happened. Overnight, and I mean, she catches pneumonia every two seconds. They always rush into the hospital. Poor Liz, poor cursed Liz. It's falling apart. It's all about glue and band-aids now. It's so sad. They rushed into the hospital this evening. They knew it was Liz. They found a foot in the middle of the highway. They said, Liz is falling apart. This has to be a foot. And a bottle of white diamonds was laying right next to her. That this is her perfume. This must be her foot. Because Liz can sell that perfume, can't she? Oh, she can sell that perfume. Gone, Liz. And who else I have to talk about, too? It's just the Janice's thing. It's all just so sad. And then Bush is on TV talking about sales and clones. And come on, when white folks get the, the mouse and stuff, they've done it already. They got some people clone folks in basements somewhere. They've already done that. The white people don't fool me. When they come telling you about it, it's old. This ain't new. Talking about a sheep. All that stuff is just to, to keep us in the dark. They didn't did all that stuff. I can't wait till they clone a nigga and he get away. <laughs> it's going to be on the news. That white folks going to be scared. <laughs> a clone nigger escaped. <laughs> Catch him before he multiplies. He could be any nigger. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a BET movie. A clone nigger that escaped. A BET special. I was at something and they couldn't put the camera on me. Well, they know this is dangerous. So, Paul, BET's owned by white people. What do you think? I said, what is it a thing? Yeah, it's owned by white folks, like we used to be. They shut down all the cameras. No, thank you. <laughs> Every time I talk, they shut the cameras down. Academy Awards Academy. Paul, who do you think should win the Academy Awards? I said, I don't care what white person wins. <laughs> uh, my grandmother died when she was 87. I sure miss her because she never went to school, but she said some stuff that used to just kill me. She said, a, a dog that will bring a bone or take one. Birds fly high, but they got to come to the ground to get water. Now, that's some stuff that makes a lot of sense. She said, people always think the grass is green on the other side. She said, but remember what they're putting on that grass to keep it green. You know, she used to say some stuff. And the women in my family stay out late, stay out two nights. She would get on their ass. She was on them. She said, they come home. She said, dumb? She said, call them dumb bitch. She said, you dumb bitch? Don't you know a wet pussy and a dry purse don't go together? <laughs> oh, 
Oh, very, very funny stuff. Bush, 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 Bush. That's the three sixes. Six, six. He is, he's the devil. He is. He is the devil. You can see the way he talks. He's just talking and it's about nothing. Yes, yeah, just a run in that mouth. And all of them get in that trouble sexually. And, and then we had a perfect record. And then messy ass Jesse. Messy Jesse ruined black people's image. Telling us to stay out the bushes. No, nigga, you stay out the bush. <laughs> Jesse and that old ass baby. That, baby. that was an old baby. The baby probably called the press and told him. What's the rapper to change his name? Um, Puffy. P, P. Diddy. He should have changed it to Lucky Nigga, because that's exactly what he was. <laughs> Wasn't he lucky? But he had Johnny. So Johnny gets you off, though. You know that. Because anytime Johnny starts to rhyme, they let somebody black free somewhere in the world. Johnny's rhyming. Let him go. Well, Johnny can rhyme you right out of jail. Started with OJ, remember? About the glove when it wouldn't fit? If it don't fit, a quit. They, they let O.J. go. There goes the rhyme. And P. Diddy, he rhymed him out too. If the gun wasn't in the car, it wasn't at the bar. <laughs> Johnny will rhyme you out of jail. <laughs> Johnny is damn near a rapper. All right. <laughs> Nicole Simpson, if them people could have come out, Cleo, if Cleo could have told them the future, if those people could have seen, everybody got filthy rich off Nicole's death, you do know that, from Johnny to all of them, and that, that if they would have seen what her death was going to bring, you'd have had about 20 people back there stabbing that woman. <laughs> That's the truth. Look at them people that got everybody spent off that, they still getting it, they're getting filthy rich off that, and they didn't drove poor OJ crazy. And you know white folks can talk to animals. I mean, that's a whole different subject because they kill me with that. What is the obsession with white people and wild animals? Black folks, we come from where wild animals live, and we don't give a damn about them. But white people are fascinated with wild animals, especially monkeys. A monkey could be in a tree and a white person pass by. Five minutes later, the white person know all the monkey's business. The monkey's, the monkey's name is Dave. He's not from around here. What? <laughs> they have an obsession. They do. I don't care. They can sit and look and look crazy at me and get mad. I don't give a damn because it's the truth. And they have an obsession. Every time I turn on TV, I see somebody white trying to train something wild, riding the elephant, sticking their head in the lion's head, trying to talk to a gorilla with sign language, and it's they go and all the crazy bullshit. But I'm sick of it. White folks, train your kids. How about training your kids? Stay, sit, leave the gun at home. Train your damn kids. sick of little crazy little white kids. They scare me, especially they got on Catholic uniforms. I run from them. Because <laughs> when I went to school, we had recess, we all came back. Now you go to recess, half people don't come back. You know, and the teacher used to take an apple and all that kind of stuff. Now the teacher want to sleep with you. Teachers having the students' babies. It's some wild stuff. And then this white woman that killed all her kids, I'm hip to that. See, that's that man. That man set that woman up. Anytime you have them syndromes and all that stuff, why would he give her five babies and then have homestead? He got the kids up underneath her 24-7. He was sick of her and the kids. Now he got all the insurance. He got everything. That's why he can walk around saying, oh, I love her, because she ain't never coming home. He got away with murder. Does it make sense or not? Why would you keep your wife pregnant? You know she got these mental problems and have the kids at home homesteading. And you ain't there. So she called him up saying, there's trouble with the kids. He said, all of them? She said, all of them. I bet he went. <laughs> they didn't tell you about the little black child she had. He got away. <laughs> Fought her and just ran out the door. <laughs> no, it's the end of the world. Everything is crazy. And television, they start, I can't stand TV. I mean, there's not that many happy black... Niggas are too happy on television for me. So I can't watch none of that crap. WB would be black. Um, <laughs> UPN, you pick a nigga, any nigga you want. Um, <laughs> but I love me some Jerry Springer. 
Now, that's the all-American show. Where else could you see three white women fight over a nigger with one tooth? <laughs> and no job. And speaks fluent Ebonics. <laughs> Reggie, how come you got three women? They like dick, Jay. They like great big old black thick dick, Jay. Jay, your mama like dick? <laughs> Jerry Springer is the bomb. And then they got, they, see, and then another thing white people are obsessed with, the dead. I, I, I see dead people. they obsessed with dead. I see white people. Make them stop. But, um, you know, they're always talking to the dead. White people have an obsession about the dead. That's why they try to bring Elvis back. They have an obsession. The dead, white folks, the dead don't come back. That's all bullshit. The dead ain't coming back. If the dead could come back, the slaves would be the first person to come back and whoop your ass. Trust me. Trust me. If dead folks was coming back, slaves would come back and whoop some white ass. You'd be sitting on the bus getting your ass whooped. Oh, oh, oh I just keep hearing chains and singing. <laughs> Old Southern songs. And they kept stuffing cotton in my behind. I don't... <laughs> Trust me, if the dead could come back, believe me, talk about crossover. Some stupid show on high five sci fi channels. This man's talking to dead people. It's so phony and everybody's so stupid. Please, let's all hold hands and contact the living. Try that. The dead is for the dead. They even got little niggas running around. Oh, Tupac is alive. I said, Nigga, are you crazy? Tupac is as dead as a doornail. They tried to bring Elvis's white ass back. Only white folks get to come halfway back. I mean, Ain't no nigga ain't coming back. You, you never heard about say they saw Sammy Davis at Ralph's shopping. And he looked great. I said, hi, Candyman. And I knew Elvis wasn't coming back. When Michael Jackson married his daughter, if that didn't bring that white man back, he ain't coming back. He ain't coming back. Elvis has left the building for good, kids. Well, I got rappers in my house. They was all saying that. And I got on them. I said, no, they did. Then I convinced them. They said, yeah, you're right. Tupac and Biggie, they in heaven. Uh, I said, that make more sense. They both had faith. But anyway, look. Um, <laughs> and then it was in the paper the other day. Some little white boy got a, uh, lost from his sister and his father up in the mountains. You read this yet? Gone three or four days, but they found him. Why are white folks always come up missing? That's why they're on the milk cartons. And I don't get that milk carton stuff with the kids on the milk carton. Find the parents. They're at some bar drinking, trying to forget they had kids. Put them on whiskey bottles. Find them. Give me another shot, Joe. <laughs> yeah, that's me. But they always are coming up missing. That's why that, you know, when you pick up a paper, you don't read about black people being missing in the woods or lost in the snow or plane crashed or the boat. They, we don't know what they went out fishing. We don't know what happened. You can't lose us. But you can lose somebody, white, because they're so nosy. If they mind their own business, they could find their way home. A hundred white people go to the woods. One of them going to come up missing because they're going to get real nosy and straggle off by themselves. Oh, look, look the hole. Uh, look how deep the hole is. Ah! They're coming up missing. Because they're nosy. Are they going to wander in a cave, looking at the writing on the wall? Is this, is this Egyptian? Oh, look at this writing. <laughs> Something's going to get them. They're coming up missing. Are they going to be mountain climbing? They're going to be mountain climbing. And some mountain goat going. <laughs> they're coming up missing. <laughs> and if you've got white friends and it snows, go to your white friend's house and tie them down. Because snow and white folks don't mix. The minute there's a snowstorm, they get crazy. It's, it's a snowstorm. Let's go for a walk, get the baby. There's something wrong with them. <laughs> Always reading that stuff, they're coming up damn missing. You never read that about black people. So white folks, when you go to the woods, take about 20 niggas with you, get home safe. <laughs> and I'm serious, take black folks with you. Because you run off from them black people, they'll run right behind you. Where are you going? Do I look like Hansel and Gretel? I came with you, I'm going home with you. Give me them goddamn car keys. 
You're not losing them, niggas. You're not losing them. Especially if you owe them some money. <laughs> they sticking with you like glue. God knows you've tried. Try to keep out your neighborhood. That neighborhood stuff kills me. Why people go, I don't want them in my neighborhood. I said, what balls? Because they'll, they'll spend such money, $10 million, live up on a hill, just to move away from black folks. And then the rain come and the mudslide, and they wake up on Crenshaw. <laughs> I didn't spend $10 million to live next door to Popeyes. <laughs> That's the truth. Uh, go live near the water. It's because it's, we don't like salt air. It's not about water. They don't like salt air. And driving while black is real, too. That stuff is real. It's not a joke. They ask us all kind of wild shit. Uh, does the owner of the car know you have it? What? Do you live in the area? Do you? Where are you going? I'm driving till I run out of gas. Would you like to follow me? I didn't know I had to have a South African pass. I didn't know I had to be little black sambo and drive around in circles around my house till I turn into Serb. I don't, I don't get this. And don't have a white person in your car. Please don't. When they pull you over, they're going to go right to the white person. Are you okay? Just checking. What? <laughs> and don't have your white friend drive. You're in real trouble then. Then they come to you. Can I see your license? But I'm not driving. And they got a drunk test now. You got to be in the circus and double jointed to pass it. Touch your leg, touch your butt, bend over, flip. I mean, it's crazy. And they put a big bright light on you, then a little bit of light. What color is this light? It's real crazy. They ask you stupid stuff. Uh, say your ABCs in Spanish and French. I mean, just crazy stuff. Then you get out the car. All right, walk a straight line. I ran all the way home. I just ran. Don't give me a head start. I just started running. And it was dark, too. I ran. What is it? What is it? Drunk driving? 5,010? Come on. My car's worth $250. I can buy a new car. I love keys, coat, all that shit. They still standing there. Well, I guess the nigga wasn't drunk. It's crazy. And then don't watch that 10 most wanted. Don't watch that because you see people you know. It's real scary. People you went to school with, it's dumb. Don't watch it. They get you caught up in that crap. I watched that. Some white woman had robbed three banks, killed five people. And I was down in Texas, saw her coming out of a store. I grabbed about a half, threw her down. I knew I had my reward. I put my foot on her. Police came. I spent six months in a Texas jail. They said, nigga, do you know you attacked one of our most leading actresses. They should tell you them people are fake. I did they, she was an actress. That shit is not real. I thought it was a real lady. <laughs> so don't watch it because you get caught up in that shit. Ten most wanted. And you see they're out there. It's all them. Them white serial killers, aren't they scary? Oh, my God. Every day they pop up doing crazy shit. And they get away with it because they have all the answers. Crazy white man, why'd you kill your wife? Uh, I was sleepwalking. He was sleepwalking, that is a thought. Crazy white man, why'd you burn up everybody in the house? I don't remember. <laughs> he doesn't remember. Crazy white man, why'd you kill the entire neighborhood? I'm three different personalities. <laughs> That'll work. They don't let black folks do that. Crazy black man, why'd you kill everybody in I'm three different personalities. Well, pick who you want to be, nigga. Somebody going to jail. Steve, Bob, I'm sending somebody's black ass to jail. Just who do you want to be today? See, they don't let us give those answers. Crazy black man, why did you kill your wife? I was sleepwalking. Well, we're going to put you to sleep, nigga. There'll be no more walking. Why'd you burn up the whole house? I don't remember. 2,000 years, I bet you will remember. <laughs> It's the truth. They don't let us do what they do. That's why that white man kills me. He kills me. He's the freest creature on this planet. He, even if he loses, he wins. Because I didn't think I lived this long. Because I've been through the 50s and all that stuff. And white people used to talk like they talk now. They talk crazy. Reverse discrimination. That is the most outrageous statement ever made on this fucking planet. And they get away with saying it. It's so nervy. They never said it in the 50s and the 60s and the 70s because they were in the control, total control. So there was no such thing as a reverse and none of that stuff. So it's like it's flip-flop, like we have freedom now, but we bet not exercise the bullshit that they did.
If we even dare try it, then the law's gonna get us. Now, just a second, this is reverse. I said, isn't that ballsy? That's some nervy stuff to say. It's reverse, oh, so that's proof that it was, existed at one time. Well, thank you for admitting it, you know? But they be tripping with that, don't they? And make up stuff, the race card. The race card? Where, where did that come from? I'm trying to get my visa, I got a race card? You're using a race card. But you notice white folks never mention that card that they've used all their life. The massa card, they don't bring that one up, do they? Do they ever bring that one up in court? Oh, the massa, the ma what about the massa card? Uh, we'll go on with the next question. Thank you so much. See, they don't want to bring that up. The massa card, and they use that automatically. They use the massa card, you know. You're separating. I mean, I got off stage on the white boy. I said, Paul, I love what you do, but you make me feel so guilty. Must everything be race? Uh, yes, everything. He said, well, then you must think I'm the devil. I said, no, but you'll do till the real one gets here. <laughs> they talk crazy. I talk crazy. Then I'm working. Some white woman got up. I'm leaving. I said, and? I just want to know, what does nigger mean? I said, I have no idea. But I know what nigger lover means, and that's you, because why have you up in my face? Why aren't you gone? Your man left. Well, you all up in my face. You must love niggers. No, I'm from South Africa. I said, and you tell people? <laughs> I want you to come to South Africa. I said, sweetheart, I won't go to Mexico. And that's for real. My friends are taking me there. I won't go. I have half my rights here. I ain't going nowhere. I ain't got no rights. I ain't stupid. I got half of them here. You think I'm going to Mexico where I don't have none? I don't think so. I don't go. I said, I'm not coming to no South Africa. I'm here in America 500 years ago. There's problems. I got problems with white folks. And you, I, you want me to come to South Africa and your shit ended last week? I don't think so. <laughs> I'm keeping my black ass right here in America where I can tell you to kiss my ass. The darkest part, bring a flashlight, you'll need one. You want to trick me over there and have me working in the diamond mine? I ain't stupid. You're not in California now, nigger, and if he tells jokes, whip him. We don't do jokes over here. Well, I'm going to be so stupid. Oh, yeah, I'm going to go to South Africa, yeah. I don't think so. Well, I do already. I'm going to get in trouble. I always get in trouble with white people. I've, since I was five, I've been getting in trouble with them. Because I can't help with speaking up. I always speak up. I've caused so much trouble in school. I come into one class, they were reading Little Black Sambo. And I said, oh, really? They were getting off on it. And Black Mumbo and Black Jumbo. I said, I got something for you tomorrow. I'm going to read my, my thing tomorrow. So the next day, I came with Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Because the class made them, the teacher let me read it. Said, well, no, we have to have Paul read. And I drove them crazy. I said, her hair was as black as cold. Her eyes were as blue as the sky. She was a hoe. I just drove one crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and the little, little drawers was pimping her. But what's funny is, and they think I'm white bashing, glad you recognize her, but What's funny is the average white person, not all white people, don't have a clue to what we go through. There's not a clue. We go through stuff, like I've went through stuff in my life that I'll never forget. You know, and it, and it, it was the racist stuff and I won't ever get over it. They say, oh, you're bitter. I'm not bitter about it. It's just that if the shoe is on the other foot, because white people with their temperament, trust me, white people could not have been slaves. They could have not made it the way they made it. They don't have the temperament for it. You can tell that, just read their history. They do not have the temperament. If white folks were the slaves and it was reversed, it had been some different shit in history. Because first of all, they got tired of picking that cotton because they got sunburns and all that stuff. You know, they burn easy. And they threw that hair back and got pissed because, you know, they can get angry. Fuck you, buddy. I'm not picking this shit. Where's my goddamn lawyer? I'm not going to sing and pick this now. Either I'm a worker or I'm an entertainer. Make up your goddamn mind. Come on, Helen. Come on, Susan. We're out of here. <laughs> Bastards. The hell with your goddamn plantation. I don't want any part of this shit. White folks got a temperament that don't quit. <laughs> See, we're easy with stuff, and we can get, go along with shit. It's so sad. It is, but they don't. Hey, slavery would have probably ended in six months. Because we'd have got tired of them because they'd have wore us out. You know that. I mean, how much can you beat a person? <laughs> 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 they 
There have been lawsuits and counter lawsuits. You know, white folks get crazy. <laughs> and you sold my kids, you bastard. <laughs> my mama cooking for you and breastfeeding your goddamn kids. You're giving me money, buddy. You know that. That's why I don't like Africans. I cannot stand an African. No, because we waited and they didn't come get us. I'm pissed about that. You know they should have come to get us. They wrote us off like a bad check. And then they got attitude. I got attitude. I'm the one that's mad. 500 years later, they show up driving a cab. I got a car. I don't need a ride. I'm, I'm going for the operation anyway. I'm going uh, in September. I'm going to China. I'm, I'm going to be Chinese when I come back. They have a major opera a racial operation. I'm coming back Chinese. Mm -hmm. So just get ready. Get ready for the new name, the new me. Bling, bling. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> 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 you get these eyes fixed, I'm getting a reverse thing. Because we didn't want round eyes. I want some slant ones. It's a trip. It's all so trip. The movies are so trippy. They just kill me with the films. I just laugh all the time. I just laugh at white people constantly. They're too funny. They're going to make a movie and call it The Mexican. Are they bold? And it's a gun. They think they're cute. I'm going to make me a movie. Call it Hunky. It's a gun. Oh, look at Hunky. Yeah. Got my Hunky. Yeah. They get away with murder, don't they? Get away with murder with a smile. We're only kidding. No problem. White men can't jump. They'll just name their movie whatever they want to. When I first saw that, I said, yeah, I know. They don't have to. They own the team. The niggas do all the jumping. Yeah, niggas jump, jump. We're writing that check. It's so sad. And we've somewhere along the line, the, the slave mentality, we've lost it. I don't know, especially in California. I don't know why we don't love each other. There is no love here. These black people here are bought and sold every day, and they're all under the illusion of inclusion. They're all such coons and happy slaves. I deal with these niggas every day on these studios. These niggas get on my goddamn nerve. It's not enough money in the fucking world, nigga. What is wrong with you? I'm, I'm the only one got an eyesight? You don't see and hear this stuff? Just anything to be on that film and to be on that stuff. This is bullshit. Back off, nigga. Film is very dangerous. What you do on film, because them people outside of America believe that shit when they see it. They think it's a documentary. They don't think it. It's like that on HBO, The Corner. Remember how good The Corner was? It was too real for them. You see, it didn't win nothing. It was too, it was, it, it was too good. It was too much like a documentary. They couldn't handle it. Went, no, 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 no. That, that, it's nice, but let's move on. But they put that white bullshit on TV, like this soprano, sh this shit that's on. I don't allow it in my house. About the mafia, the mafia is, are into child pornography. They're into prostitution. They're into murder. They're into laundering money. And they still exist today. These people are not to be praised and looked at as some heroes and have all this, this meaning and this family. All that's bullshit. They're trash. I, said, I know it's quiet in here. You can the hush come over Jerusalem, but hey, <laughs> I'm being real. And everybody can get mad if they want to, but it's the fucking truth. I'm from the old school when the Untouchables was on. They was finding them, killing them, and putting them in jail. Now, watch that if you want to watch something about some attack. Not this bullshit, because that's exactly what that is. And the TV always says, oh, we're watching it, and the kids and all that. They're doing whatever the hell they want to do. They ain't interested in that shit. Come on, we watch the violence and that. They put whatever they feel white and feel this in. They'll just do what they want to do. Right in people's face and seduce everybody, and everybody goes for it. And because it's popular, the majority does not rule. A lynch mob is a majority, but it don't make it right what they do to somebody. And y'all get that in your head, and I'm serious. Get that in your brain. Get that in your brain and decide and choose and know when you see some bullshit. And that's what that stuff is. It gets on my nerve. And that sex in the city gets on my nerve. They're going to film that in New York and not show no niggas. How are you going to have a, a show in New York and don't see niggas? That's the streets of San Francisco, and you, and you didn't see Chinese folks. They're always doing some crazy shit. You try doing a movie in Malibu and not showing white folks and see how crazy they get. Because that's where they live. 
in Malibu. They gave up Venice to Mexicans and niggas, but they ain't giving up Malibu. They'll drown everybody before they give that up. <laughs> it's the truth. I sit up here, you know it's the truth. Now I got to talk about what I came to talk about, and that's the end where we're going to talk about nigger. And I'm the nigger expert because they've been having me on all these shows asking me about it, and it's been so funny. Because uh, J Lo, Jennifer Lopez, she said nigger. And that's the first thing I asked me. Well, what do you think, Paul? J Lo said nigger. I said, well, hey, she's Puerto Rican. The Puerto Ricans and Cubans they ain't nothing but niggas that can swim, so let's get over it. <laughs> it's the truth. They took slaves everywhere. Especially them black Cubans, they know. The ones that wear white all year round, the ones they don't mess with, the ones that talk to the dead, the ones that light the candles, the ones that will make a chicken kiss a snake. You know those people. Yeah, so they know what's up. They're black. And she was going with Puffy, wasn't she? So that means she got black in her in more ways than one. Well, they know big things. And it's just a word. I mean, I know the word doesn't bother me. I've never been, I've, I've uh, cut the cord, nigga. I mean, it doesn't bother me. It doesn't. It just doesn't. I mean, I know who I am, so it doesn't have anything to do with me when I hear it. But more importantly, I know who white people are. That's more important, so it doesn't bother me. They said, you, you, it, when a white person says, nigger, Paul, it really doesn't bother you? I said, no, I like a little salt on my cracker. The white people are so chained to it. I understand a lot of black people are in jail, and they call that a lot, so they hate to hear it. And it's not really the word it's what comes behind the word, the murder and all the craziness and the slavery and all that, and I understand all that, but that was then and this is now, and it's like removing the teeth from the great white shark. That's how I look at it. It's taking the teeth out, and now it's just a big, fat, funky fish hopping around in the water. And I don't think people like it, so they go into a bag about it. And black people really get on my nerve when it bothers them, because if it doesn't apply, let it fly. And when they get so hooked into it, I said, they want you emotionally hooked into this word. And the word we should be emotional about, it's freedom. Now, I just said that. I didn't hear nobody respond. Now, see, when I said that word, freedom, all you niggas should have, yeah! But do you say that? No. Because you're just like those wild animals that are fighting like mad while they're catching them and stuff. They're just fighting. And then they get over there and they lock them up in that cage, in that zoo, and then they get lost, hopeless, and they lose all that wild craziness they had. But don't you think for a second that those animals don't know who put them there. They know white folks put them there. Take your white friends over to the zoo. You can see the way they look at them with hate. You don't hate when you see it. They just stare at them. Hoping they'll come near the cage. And you think I'm kidding. Then take about 15 or 20 of your black friends over there. Watch the animals. When they see that many black people, they get crazy. They think they're going home. Jumping up, throwing up gang signs. So the word nigger, I mean, hey, I say it a hundred times every morning. It makes my teeth white. Nigger, 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 nigger. And we've used it in so many ways. I mean, we've used it lovingly. We've used it with hate. We've used it when we want to put somebody down. We use it when we want to get mad at somebody. But when I was a kid coming up and it really meant something and it really hurt people, black people didn't say that about nigger. They kept quiet. They were scared. And now the word don't mean a goddamn thing. Everybody got something to say about it. That's what tickles me. They all run up in the N-word. I don't even like the N-word. I always go, what? What are you trying to say, nigga? Was that soften it, the N-word? And you can stop people from saying it, but you can't stop the emotion behind it. It's going to be here. As long as white folks are on this planet, nigga will be here too. The racial stuff will be here too. Because more than any other race, look at all the other races. Us and white people, we're family because of slavery. Thank you, Jefferson. But because of slavery... <laughs> No, that's true. Because you know that little black girl that Jefferson had all the babies by? You do know that she was half-sister to his wife. So that meant his father-in-law was doing exactly what he was doing. Or how could his wife be half-sister to this girl? So there wasn't no isolated incident. They try to make you think that. That's why people try to make you think, oh, this was isolated. No, they were all doing it. That's why our blood is very very close to theirs. It's family. And that's why we always will have problems. Just like over there in Israel. We're going to always have problems with them. And the problem is, we got away, and that wasn't in the book. Niggas getting away wasn't in the book. And we ain't never be forgiven for that. Because if you go back in history and look, and look at all the old things, white people's old movies, everything, they were happier people when we were slaves. They were. Because we were in their homes. We lived with them. Now that we're free, I don't want you in my neighborhood. That don't even make sense, now does it? 
Oh, I'm free, but I can't even come on the block now? But when you owned me, I was in your bed. Now, you have to admit, now there's something wrong with that picture. Come on, y'all. I don't, you know, you heard a lot of people, I don't want them in the neighborhood. Can't move in my neighborhood. But when you owned us, we were in your house. See the difference? That's that goddamn ownership. Let slavery come back in tomorrow. Wherever them white folks live, whatever neighborhoods, they'll be out on the porch. Welcome home. <laughs> Miss you. Go to your room. Nothing's changed. <laughs> no, when we, when we, when they owned us, when they owned us, we had 12 jobs apiece. Now that we got away free, what did they say to us? Unemployment. Sorry, there are no jobs. That slave, you come back in, believe me, come get your rest. You've got those 12 jobs to go to in the morning. <laughs> when I was writing for Living Color, I used to write shit, and I'd go in there, and they, did, they, they would do it. But it was funny. They said, oh, no, we can't do that. We can't do it. I wrote something about Cinderella, and I made, uh, I made uh, her mother. Her mother uh, the mother was black, and they had two black daughters. And Cinderella was white, and they wore her out. <laughs> Scrub it, you're not going to the ball. They had a list of things. Did you do this? Did you do that? She said, yes, yes. She said, you make the soup? Yes. Yeah. Did you pick the cotton? And she said, we don't have any cotton. Then we'll have to grow some. <laughs> that shit was funny. And I go in and write, and go, oh, no, we can't do it. We can't do it. And then I did what, what the, the Wizard of Oz. I wrote that. I remember the fairy garden mother, the little blonde lady with the thing? I made her a great big old fat, fat Aunt Jemima black. And she told a little, uh, little Julie Garland part, you know, you, you can go home, just click your heels. And she clicked it three times, it blew up. <laughs> and then I had a look at the camera and go, I lose more little white girls like that. Now that shit is funny. They were scared to do it. Oh, we can't do it, we can't do it, we can't do it. I said, but this shit is funny. Ain't that some funny shit? Boom, she just blew up. <laughs> I know it's more little white girls like that. <laughs> that is some funny ass shit. I don't give a damn what you say. Let me tell you some street jokes, because I'm the only person who got a nerve to tell street jokes. Two old ladies sitting on the porch watching the kids dance. And one of them says, Susie, do you remember the minuet? She said, no, I don't even remember the men I screwed. But listen. <laughs> Oh, come on, it's funny. You could give it up. You know damn well it's funny. And you can't wait to repeat it, and you ain't giving me no goddamn credit. Wait till you get a couple of drinks on you. Oh, I got one. <laughs> White man walking on the beach finds a, a, a genie's lamp. Took it home and shined it up. Three white genies came up. They said, don't talk. We've been in there 100,000 years. We don't want to hear no conversation. Just think whatever you want. You got three wishes, you'll get it. Big old mansion. He goes from bedroom to bedroom. Naked bunny standing there, naked. Knock on the door. Open the door. There's three Ku Klux Klan in hoods. They take him and hang him. Next day, the three white genies are at Starbucks drinking coffee, talking. And the genie goes, you know, that first wish, a big mansion, everybody wants that. I could relate to that. He said, I know. It's in the second wish, the naked bunnies. I could relate to that. But that third wish, I'm confused with that. So this third wish is, yeah. He said, he wanted to be hung like a nigger. Anyway, listen. <laughs> oh, come on, it's funny. It's funny. <laughs> you know damn well it's funny. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> All right. A black man is homeless, so he goes to the, 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 the farm area to talk to the farmer. His wife said, look, I need some work. I'm just starving and stuff. You have to help me. They said, we got a lot of stuff around here. You could dig the well, do the roof. We got all kinds. Of... He said, oh, I don't do manual labor. They said, what? Well, what do you do? So I'm like Eddie Murphy. I talk to the animals. And the wife said, well, just try them out for one night. So next morning, the farmer told her husband, the farmer's wife said, get up, go find out who we talked to. Who are you talking to? The chickens. They said, you got some hay that's rubbing on the ass. It's not natural hay. Put the natural hay down there, and they'll lay 10 times as much eggs. It happened. Farmer's wife got all that money. Good, good. Give him some clothes. Give him some money. Keep him. We got us a gold mine. Next morning, get up, go down there and find out who it talked to. He said, talk to the, the horses. And they said, you got the iron here. Go back to the rope, and they'll just plow three times as much. The horses did it. She said, get up, get up. Next morning, go on. 
I said, talk to the cows. So she got 10 on their nipples. Go back to your hand, natural, and you'll get five times as much milk. They did it. Great. She said, oh, this is great. Got all this money. This is great. Go down there and talk to him. Find out who we talked to. The farmer went down there and said, who'd you talk to? And the man said, well, I've been talking to the sheep. And the man said, the sheep, don't talk to them. They're big liars. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. It's funny. It's funny. And you can't wait to tell it. But listen. <laughs> big liars. <laughs> She's funny. She's going, yeah, the sheep. Yeah. But I've heard a lot of things. You know, you hear all kind of stuff. Because I heard that uh, Adam was a white man. Did you hear that? Mm-hmm. That's how they could prove it. He said, you ever try to take a, a rib from a nigger? But listen. Uh, <laughs> 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 I hear all of those kind of crazy stuff. <laughs> Do you know what they say in the beginning? Everybody, everybody was black. Do you hear that? The, 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 the world, everybody was black. And so they said, come down to the, the water and cleanse yourself. And all the aggressive people ran down the water and came out white. You know, they ran out, jumped in the water. And all the lazy niggas went down there and put their hands and feet in the water. <laughs> that was very funny. Quite enough. I was always trying to run, shit, aren't they? Now just hold on. He's overstepped his boundaries. <laughs> I counted, nigger, and he said it 20 times. Uh, he went over his boundaries. We were just to get about 10 or 15 niggers. He did 20. I want something done about that. It's too fucking funny. Nothing can be white enough, but it can be too black, can it? That's what kills me. Can it be too black? This is too black. But nothing can be too white. That's why I go to all the white things. I go to this ice skating rings and stand up. This is too white. The hell with all of you. I go to hockey games. The hell with you. It's too white. What are they doing? Those skiing accidents. Oh, you know, as a black girl, that I got to tell white folks, because, you know, we've been whooping their ass in tennis. As a black girl, well, we whooped white folks' ass. They didn't know we could play tennis like that. They're still standing over there in England. But there's a black girl that can ski. Get ready, y'all. She can ski her ass off. And she's from the islands. She's been practicing on dirt. Just wait till she gets some snow. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, white folks are mad at us because we've been beating them at their own game. We've been beating them at their sports. You know they're mad. We whipped their ass in tennis. And don't even mention golf. Don't even mention golf. I'm surprised white folks ain't made golf against the law. It's against the law. Close every golf club in the country. Want these niggers eating their greens, not playing on ours. Because they didn't drove Tiger Wood crazy. What is he now? Cabba what? Cabba Calasian. What the hey, nigger, please? What does that mean? Cabba Calasian? Please. I don't know about the space program, but I know a nigger when I see one. Tiger Wood is black. Tiger Wood's lips are bigger than LeVar Burton's. I saw his daddy, nigger. I saw his mammy, nigger lover. That's a nigger in my goddamn book. Fuzzy Wuzzy knew what he was. I like Tony the Tagger better than I do Tagger Wood. At least Tony knows he's white and he's proud. Great! You don't hear Tony talking stupid. I'm one-fourth zebra. I'm one-third giraffe. <laughs> but anyway, we're glad that you guys came. And uh, I want to thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks a lot. You've been nice to me. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you.